Welcome back to Transforming Lives with Prophetess Rain. That's me, Prophetess Rain, and I'm so excited that you have joined us today for another Authentic Worship Monday. Today we're talking about single, saved, and sexy. Is there any context in which a Christian would want to be considered single, saved, and sexy? Should you be? Could you be? Can you be? Do you want to be? We're going to discuss it coming up right now. <music> Single, saved, and sexy. This has been an ongoing conversation on social media. You have probably seen it on ministry flyers. There have been uh, private group discussions on Facebook. There has been such conversations swirling this topic. And when I tell you we talk about these things, it gets heated because people believe what they believe. So I'm always about dissecting what it is we say, what it is we believe, and should we actually believe it? Are we really considering everything that we need to consider when we speak? certain things over ourselves because again we're all about transformation we're all about worshiping authentically and making sure that we honor God in everything that we do and we say now when you discuss these things there are always somebody who says you're such a prude you don't get it and you know what I'm okay with that I'm okay with taking that hit because as I studied this as I thought about this there are some things that came to me that I am here to share with you and you know what you are free to make whatever decision you desire to make about the use of this language now it should first be said when we ask the question can a Christian be sexy Absolutely. Of course they can. But you can be within a certain context, which is why we're having this conversation. Would you want to mix being sexy with a ministry event? Probably not. And here's why before you throw a shoe at me. When you think of certain words like sexy, like love, like beautiful, we have all of these extra definitions that we put on words that don't necessarily change the actual definition so now you hear people saying oh that phone is sexy that car is sexy that outfit is sexy this you know and, and in some context they're right um when they use that language but in others you can tell that they're actually pushing the dialogue i've literally heard people say now that wig that's sexy or that lipstick that's sexy or you know whatever the case may be we tend to label certain things as sexy and we're not necessarily thinking of it when we're labeling that way in a sexual context all right so we do tend in modern culture to shift the dialogue to increase the conversation and to apply other definitions based on our slang and our context you know in the way that we think we mean it but again it doesn't necessarily change the root meaning of the word all right so when you look up in the dictionary the word sexy the root word of course is sex and for something to be sexy when you look it up in the dictionary it is it is absolutely to create or stir up sexual arousal you hear what i'm saying so when you use the word sexy it is that which invokes sexual arousal now when we think about that in a ministry context i don't think that's what we mean i don't think that's what we intend to say however what we speak out of our mouth gate does give room for things to start to work in our atmosphere and i'll share very briefly what the lord ministered to me and again you can take it and do whatever you want but there was a time where i really believed that i, I want to be sexy i want people to look at me and see that i'm a saved young woman but i'm sexy too and the lord said to me but look up the definition definition and when I looked it up as, as I just gave it to you the Lord said to me now why would you want to evoke that in any context outside of the context of marriage so now earlier I asked you can a Christian be saved and sexy of course you can but you want to be sexy in the right context for me that is in the context of being with my husband do I want him to find me sexy absolutely do I want him to be physically aroused by me yes that is a part of being mar married however I do not want to go run a revival and have people sitting there being sexually aroused by my presence now I can feel you already thinking she's taking it too far. She's doing too much. You know, we don't mean it that way. And again, we don't necessarily mean it that way. So what do we mean? I think what we really mean is I'm single, but I'm also attractive. You know, I want you to find me attractive. You know, I've heard people say intelligence is sexy. Is it? 
does somebody's intelligence sexually arouse you? Yeah, okay, it, it could. I'm not going to say that it doesn't. But if you find yourself using that language, then you're going to be pretty sexually aroused by a whole lot of things. You know, you know, people have said, I find the anointing sexy. Do you? Are you sexually aroused when somebody is up preaching? I think you might want to consider what it is you really mean and then state what you really mean. Do I think an intelligence is attractive? Absolutely. Do I think anointing is attractive? Absolutely. There are a lot of things that we see in people that I believe really are attractive, which would make you, in other words, want to be connected to that person or notice that person in a way that you discover something that appeals to you. There's something you see in them that you like. And I think we, we in, in many cases, you know, the ways in which I've heard it, we're trying to justify, as women in particular, our right to be both anointed and attractive. And I'm not even sure why we need that dialogue because that's a given. You know, if you're attractive, you're attractive. If you're not, you're not. And I think we're trying to say just because I'm attractive doesn't mean that you have the right to come at me a certain way. You know, maybe that's one aspect of it, you know, but, but when I think about ministry, all right, and this is where we have to get to the root of why we do what we do, because there's a lot of things we do traditionally. There's a lot of things that we say and our heart genuinely means well. But those things that we say do have a certain connotation and they do present the church and our ministry in a certain way. And we really need to think about that. Personally speaking, I'm not sure in what ministry context I personally, and this is just me, and I know there are many others who agree with me. I'm not sure when I would ever want to be in a context where my attractiveness matters. When we're talking about ministry, all right, again, in my relationship, yes, attractiveness matters. If, you know, if you're seeing somebody you're courting, yes, attractiveness matters. There's, there's a certain place and a context for that. If you're thinking about what you like, yes, you know, I think that considering what is sexually appealing to you, what is personally appealing to you or attractive to you, that matters when you're talking about interpersonal relationships where you may be trying to develop intimacy with someone leading toward marriage, all right? So that's when it matters. But in a context of running a revival, in a context of doing what I do as a minister of the gospel, in the context of preaching a word, in the context of going out and evangelizing, you know, in other words, going to the streets and sharing Jesus, you know, with those that might be willing to have a conversation with me. I don't have a personal need, okay, for you to perceive me as attractive or sexy or any of that, because the only light that should be shining in me is the light of God. The only thing that should matter when we're talking about ministry, the only thing that should matter is what it is God wants to say, what it is that God wants to do. What is the real vision for why we are hosting this conference? What is God telling us is going to happen in this conference or this revival or this church service? That's where our focus should be. It should always be on God, our source, our Abba, you know, where, where God is directing us and is saying, this is what I want to accomplish. And I was taught that we must be very careful about how we steer the conversation toward ourselves. This is why I personally do not accept engagements unless the Lord is really telling me to go where it's single, saved, and sexy, or pretty this, or beautiful that, or attractive, because that doesn't matter. That puts the focus on me. And I don't need anybody looking at me, you know, trying to, trying to figure out whether or not I fit the standard of sexy or pretty or attractive or beautiful or whatever. I need you to hear the words that are coming out of my mouth. I need you to receive what it is God is giving me to say to you. All right. And so when we think about what it is we are putting together, what it is we are hosting, I know what our heart intends, but I also believe in word curses. And one of the things the Lord ministered to me, one of the reasons why I kept attracting certain things to me is because I had a perception that I needed to be sexy. At the time, of course, I was single and I needed to be sexy and I wanted people to look at me in a certain way. And so then I was attracting certain types of men to me, men who said they were holy, by the way, but were attracted to what I was speaking about myself. They could see something in me that allowed them to be predator-like, okay? And this doesn't happen to everybody, but it did happen to me, and this is why I'm sharing it with you. So they perceive something in my soul. They perceive something in my personality, because let me tell you something. We can read you. We can read you by the pictures on your social media pages. We can read you by the posts that you say. We can read you by the things that you put on Instagram. We can tell 
you know, those of us that are that are discerning and most of us have a reasonable measure of discernment, we can tell where you are. And so when you engage in language like that, you are giving the opportunity room because remember, words are seeds. And they must produce a harvest. When you put a seed in the ground, what happens? It sprouts up. So if you're running around here talking about I'm sexy this and I'm sexy that, you know, eventually you're going to live that. So you're going to be more attentive to how you look. You're going to be more attentive to how you dress if that's what you're trying to evoke. Now, again, this is going somewhere that maybe people who are hosting these events don't intend. But I'm just giving you all of it. I'm giving you everything that I believe or that the Lord gave me that we really should consider. Because we open up doors, all right, and opportunities for the enemy to say, okay, I can use that. So we really do have to be careful. Now, that doesn't mean we have to have a monitor and a filter on every little thing we say. Do I believe God knows our heart? Yes, I absolutely do. However, that doesn't mean that the enemy does not hear you. And I always ask the Lord to correct my language. Whenever I'm hosting an event, I'm always asking God, you know, give me what to say. If it's a sermon title, whatever, because many things seem cute and many things we have a certain perception of, but the hearer may not. All right. And what we are communicating out to the world about who God is could be confusing. So it is my personal belief that when you're talking about being sexy, you talk about that in the right context. You talk about that within the context of marriage. Your spouse is the only one that you should want to look at you and perceive you as sexy. OK, you don't want to be running around talking about you want to make people sexually aroused, whether you intended that way or not. Why am I saying that? Why am I harping on words? Some of you might say it's a matter of semantics, but how, how carelessly do we use the word love? We'll say I love you in a minute. We'll say I love that in a minute. And we really don't think or consider the definition of love. All right. So this is another one of those words that in our culture today, in modern day society, we use it to attach to a lot of things. But we always want to remember what the root of a thing is and make sure that we're not evoking something or suggesting or communicating something that God may not want us to communicate. The enemy just needs a moment. That's it. And I'm telling you, I was trying to figure out where are all these perverts coming from? Why are people talking to me? As if, I, you know, they don't have any respect. I have people in my inbox because I was running around talking about single state and sexy and all this and that. And, you know, I did have my own insecurities. I had a lot of things I was dealing with and I was running around, you know, using that language. And um, in some cases, I wasn't necessarily dealing with anything, but I was using that language. And, and there were men who were predators that were harping on that. They were coming in my inbox and I want to go to church with you and I want to get to know you. And, it, you know, it was just dirty. It was just really, really dirty. And the Lord said to me, you are evoking certain things by your language, by your word seeds. So if you want someone to respect you, just be what I called you to be. Just do what I called you to do. It's not about you anyway. It's about the word. And so when people see you using language and talking about yourself, and that doesn't mean you can't give yourself a compliment. I know that I'm attractive. I believe I'm attractive. I believe there's a lot about me that's attractive, but I don't need that to lead out in a conference. I don't need that to lead out in a prayer breakfast. I don't need that to lead out in my evangelism. I don't need that to lead out as a prophet. If you find me attractive, that is between you and God. If you find anything about me that's attractive, yes, I'm grateful, praise the Lord, you know, because I, you know, nobody wants to be a dog, you know, but, but we've got to remember what it's about. We've got to remember perspective. We've got to remember the goal, okay, of our, our goal, our commission is to spread kingdom and kingdom has nothing to do with what we look like and I personally have just never understood why we need to be sexy this and pretty that and beautiful that in order to communicate a word from God there's a lot of things as I said that we do that are traditional we've heard it before we run with it we have in our mind a certain context that everybody may not share so if you're going to use that context you should be very clear about why you're using it you should be very clear about the root word you should be very clear about the definition and be very clear about what you may be evoking be very clear about what you may be drawing to you be very clear about how that may be affecting someone who needs to be a recipient of your ministry because we never want to give people the wrong idea all right so single saved and sexy yes we know you can be saved and you can be sexy within a certain context and you have to remember the actual definition not the definition you put on it not what you think people ought to assume when you say it 
unless you're going to make that abundantly clear 50,000 times every time you use the language, I would suggest that you steer away from that because the gospel is not meant to be sexually arousing, okay? It's not meant to evoke that in anybody. It's not about you. It's always about God and God alone. Now, as a single person, do you want other people to find you attractive? Of course. I don't think that you literally want every man or every woman who sees you to look at you and say, I'm sexually aroused or be sexually aroused by you. I think you want that from someone that God has ordained for your life and if you want people to be sexually aroused by you wherever you go whatever you do because you want to be seen as sexy I think that's a character issue I think that's something we have to give to God and we have to ask God why do I feel that way I know for me I had some self-esteem issues I know for me I was dealing with a lot of root things I had a lot of inappropriate beliefs that God needed to deal with okay so so in a broader perspective or I should say in a, not in a broader in a specific context where we're talking about sexiness and being a Christian I absolutely believe that you can be again in the context that God has ordained it I don't think that it's for you know a, a public uh, um, I don't think it's for a public announcement people who look at you and are sexually aroused by you that's between them and God and you hope that they don't come at you in a predator like manner you hope that they are that, that they will eventually you know see and hear from God because we never want to be lusting after anyone and sometimes our language whether we realize it or not whether we intend it or not can evoke lustful thoughts because if I go to an event single saved and sexy I'm looking at y'all to see how sexy you are I'm looking at your appearance and I'm you know I'm, I'm just not necessarily focused on what it is you're trying to give me in the midst of that so I think again it is important for us to be concerned more about what it is God wants us to say what it is that God wants us to communicate and just remembering ultimately it's, it's not about us it's not about us it's really not about us it's about whatever God wants to do in that moment I would love to hear your feedback on this again I know this is a hot topic conversation people will disagree I'm just giving you the perspective that God has given me some things that that you should consider I know that we often push definitions I have no problem with that I just think we need to remain mindful of what we are communicating so that we don't throw anybody off or or speak something into our lives that we don't necessarily intend to but I would love to hear your feedback leave a comment tell me what you think give me your perspective it's okay to disagree if the show is blessing you go ahead and send us an email to transform with rain at gmail.com we'd love to hear your testimony I'd also like to hear your questions as we talk about authentic worship and the things that we do as a part of our faith tradition that we need to understand and explore and make sure that we're doing them in the right context in order to be authentic worshipers. So I'm very open to that. Also, you don't have to wait till Monday to see me. On Wednesdays, we have Help Me Stand Wednesdays where we talk about a variety of things to help you stand and walk out this life called faith. So you can also send your questions, things you would like for me to pray about and address. I would love to do that. And on Saturdays, we are here again with Say Something Saturday, where we're specifically focused to healing from our traumas and emotional healing um, and just believing God to set us free and liberate us as individuals so that we can go out and be a kingdom blessing. We want to be good kingdom citizens. That's what all of these segments are. Are about I hope that you enjoyed this while I have your attention go over to my website I'm gonna post that below you'll be able to click on that link we have a lot of things that we offer from our transformation University which is a school dedicated to kingdom citizenship and wholeness and walking out faith life and walking into your destiny as God has ordained it for you I also do coaching I also have a podcast that airs every Monday at 4 p.m. Pacific Standard Time that you may want to catch and subscribe to just to be encouraged so you can check that out on our website we have a great store lots of books workbooks t-shirts mugs all kinds of stuff to uh, that you can browse and look at we want to be a blessing to you in any way that we can I want to thank you for tuning in don't keep me a secret share me with a friend subscribe to the channel so that you can be aware of new episodes as they upload Mondays Wednesdays and Saturdays share us on your social media pages until next Monday we'll be back be blessed everyone <laughs>